Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a solo playthrough of Great Western Trail Argentina. This is the new version of Great Western Trail. I really enjoy the original game, although I mostly play it competitive, not solo. But I do find the solo mode in this game to be quite good. I just happen to play this more competitively because when I play solo, I dungeon crawl. <laughs> But sometimes it's nice to have a different type of game that you play solo, and that's what this is for me. This is much more of a Euro-y type game. You're going across doing actions on the board. You're trying to collect as many victory points as you can, and you're trying to beat Pedro in the amount of victory points he will gain by the end of the game. Now, as always, make sure to turn on those Klingon subtitles. You should see them popping up right now if you have them on. Uh, that way, if I make any errors and I miss it in editing uh, and someone notates it to me later in the comments, I can then put them in the Klingon subtitles so you'll see them pop up when the error occurs. With that, let's go ahead and do a quick setup and then jump into our playthrough. After placing the board on the center of the table, you'll then grab the eight station master tiles and randomly place five of them out in the train station area. We can potentially collect those. Uh, Pedro will just discard them if he gets there first. But we can collect them. They give us a, a, a one-time benefit and then another way to score some victory points. Next, you'll want to place out the eight neutral tiles. Now, I am playing this. This is only the second time I'm playing. <laughs> so I'm going to follow the basic rules, which is where you have the building match the location on the board. But you can randomly uh, set them up any way that you want. But I'm doing A's in the A section, B in the B section so on and so forth all the way to H. Next, we'll set up the job market. You start by placing the job market token here on this top space. And then depending upon the player counts that you have, you're going to grab from this bag. We have the B bag for this. This only has workers in it. The A bag only has granjeros or farmers. And then the C bag has a combination of both. So from the B bag and depending on player count, you're going to either place five or six, seven, eight or nine, 10, 11 workers out out onto the board. We have three different type of workers here. We have a carpintero. This will help us with building buildings. We have a machinista. She is all about helping us uh, be able to move our train along the track. And we have guachos. And guachos are basically like your cowboys in the original game. We have six foresight spaces. Two of them are for A's, two of them are for B's, and two of them are C's. So I've grabbed two from each of the bags and placed them here. Whenever one of us goes to Buenos Aires, we will, in steps four, five, and six, be placing these out either onto the board or into the job market for a bit available workers that we can uh, recruit or hire. We've also placed five Granjeros onto our board. How we've done this is we've grabbed the A bag and just randomly drawn five of them. Depending upon their color, we'll place them in the certain sections. We have green, we have blue, we have orange, and we have yellow way up there. I didn't draw any yellow. You always start at the lowest cost up to the highest cost when you're placing them. So I have two here at the lower cost, one here at the lower cost, and two here at the lower cost. We can potentially help these Granjeros, or if we try and walk through their area, we're going to have to pay them some pesos depending upon what type of colored hand they have. With a black hand, it's one peso. With a green hand, it's two pesos. Now we can set up our market cattle area. So there are a total of 36 cards in a two-player game. We'll shuffle that deck and reveal nine of them. We need to match the color and type into their different sections. And depending on how many guachos we have, when we try and purchase some of these cows, we can purchase them uh, depending upon these costs if we have these certain amount of guachos when we're doing so. Cows are very important in this game because whenever you go to Buenos Aires, you're going to reveal your hand with cows and for every different type of cow you have, you're going to earn pesos. So getting higher valued ones or at least different types of ones can certainly help. They also can be used now in this game for their strength to help some of the, some of the guanjeros that are out on the board, but that will come at a cost because you can gain an exhaustion card. That's also something new. We're going to start with uh, an exhaustion card in our deck. Basically, it just clogs up your deck and gives you minus two victory points if it's in your deck at the end of the game. Next, we have the personal objective cards. There are 24 of them. You're going to reveal four. And in the solo game, it's important you keep them in this order because the AI or Pedro will always take this one and then you slide them down and reveal the next one onto the board. Uh, but of course, you can choose any one that you want when you get one. It's just, it's important to keep them in this order order for Pedro. The last piece of the board setup is setting up all your ships over here. This is also completely new from Great Great Western Trail. 
whenever you go to Buenos Aires, you're going to load your cattle onto one of these ships. And depending upon what that ship symbol is over here, at certain points in the game, those ships are going to be uh, sent off to Europe. And then you're going to place your tokens onto these island boards and you can move them around there every time you go to Buenos Aires to potentially gain some benefits. But also that means some of these ships are going to disappear. You also have a section of ships here that you're going to shuffle up. And then every time we have ships sail off, we're going to reveal two new ones. And those ones won't sail off. They'll just give you points if you can get one of your uh, discs on them. Really cool, interesting, and different mechanic. You've got the same thing, though, with Great Western Trail. We have white squares and black squares. And if those are black squares, you can take it from a black section on your player mat. You'll see that in a second. But that's the setup of the board. Let's now look at our personal setup as well as the island setups. We have three city tiles. We have Liverpool, Rotterdam, and La Havre. All three of these have an A and a B side. They recommend you, you play on the A side when you're first playing, so I have them on the A side. You're each going to start with one of your player discs here at the level one in La Havre. And throughout the game, you could potentially place these in different locations, which is kind of cool, but you have to pay the grain cost. And yes, grain is something new. Another thing that you have to manage. <laughs> uh, I a lot of times hate grain, <laughs> just with how this game has gone, at least the last time I played. But essentially, this is something completely new to Great Western Trail. Okay, now we can look at our player board. Here we have our individual player area for Great Western Trail Argentina. Up top, we have our 10 personal building tiles that we can potentially place out on the board. I have them in order from 1 to 10. There's an A and a B side. Once again, recommend the A side at the beginning, so I'm going to have them all on the A side. We start with 7 pesos. We are the first player. We start with one of these exchange tokens that at any time during our turn, or not even during our turn, we can uh, give this up to draw two cards from our deck and discard two cards. We have a deck of 15 cards. These are all basic cows, uh, as well as one, oh yeah, right on top, we have one exhaustion card in our deck to begin with. Now, when you set this up, the first thing you're going to do is make sure to ch grab the uh, movement marker equal to the number of players. So since I'm playing with one player, I've grabbed the one player token. It shows us that each turn we can move our Estanciero three spaces. Also, it shows us the cost of moving on to a space that has a black or a green hand. Of course, if it's our own building tile that has one, kind of like this one has a black hand, we don't have to pay a cost to ourselves. If Pedro ever walks through our buildings that has that, we'll just get, grab the money from the bank because he doesn't use any money. We have grain now, so that's something new. We have strength over here, which is also something new. That's how we can use or help the Granjeros. And also, we have a fourth worker area because now, instead of just grabbing a farmer and placing it next to your board and gaining two points for it and using it for objectives, you can flip it over and have it become a worker for you. You have to pay the cost. It would be six pesos. We'd gain a grain, but we can place them here. So now we have four different type of types of workers that we have on our board. And if we can get to this fourth and fifth section for any of them, it's four points for each. With that, let's go ahead and draw our four cards from our deck. Not the greatest starting hand. We have two Nayatas, a Fronterizo, and an Exhaustion card. So if we went to Buenos Aires right now, we would get three pesos. That's it, because we have a two and a one. And since these are the same, we don't get to count the second one. Yeah, so three pesos isn't great. Pedro will use a slightly different board than we do. He has spaces for three out of the four workers. He'll never grab a Granjero as a worker. He'll always grab them for the two resources. He has his deck of 30-some action cards. Also, depending upon the difficulty level, and we're going to be, going to be playing on easy because I stink at this game, uh, we will grab the green. There's green, yellow, and red cards, and each one, you can see they have dots on the right-hand side. You'll put them in that specific order. This is going to tell you the order in which he is going to load the uh, boats that are on the right hand side. So you're going to find the boat that has these matching symbols. And then we will first do this one, then this one, then this one, and then we'll start going to the next cards. There's a blue arrow that will tell you when you need to move to the next card in his stack. We need all 10 of his personal buildings, and you'll want to grab one random B worker. You're going to place it here, and then you're going to place the specialization token because there's going to be times where it says, uh, depending upon which specialist Pedro has, that's the one that he should be doing. 
if ever there's a tie, whenever that specialization token is somewhere, it will not move to a new location of these three different types of workers until one worker type has more than the other. So he'll be a worker, or I should say a builder specialist, until one of these two maybe gets three workers. We also have this. This just helps us know, depending upon, uh, depending upon how many guachos he has when he tries to uh, be able to purchase a cow, we're going to look here and it will tell us which ones to get. He's always going to go for the ones with the most victory points. Pedro will not use any pesos and will not use any of these starter cards. He will gain some cows and will just set them to the side uh, face down. Same with the objective cards and any of those are just guaranteed points for him. So yeah, he, it's going to be fun. Finally, we each placed our train here on the zero space of the train track. Pedro will always start at the beginning of the trail. We get to choose, and we are first player, any of the neutral tiles, we can set ourselves there and start the game. So that's how you start the game, is placing yourselves on one of the building tiles, activating it, and then we'll just go back and forth between us and Pedro. We'll do that until this job market token gets pushed all the way down and comes off of the board. Once that happens, and if that happens on your turn, you'll gain the two points that are on here. And then every other player, or just Pedro, or just me, depending on who does it, will get one other turn, and then the game ends, we'll count up our points, and see who wins. <laughs> now, I did tell you about how uh, for Pedro, he has those cards on determining where he's going to place his disc when he goes to Buenos Aires. Every time he crosses one of these blue uh, arrows, and we'll see that more as we play, that will be when we switch that card. So let's put this back up and on top. All right, so it's us first. We get to choose any of these neutral tiles that we can start on. In case you've never seen Great Western Trail, what you're doing in this game is moving your Estanciero at least one space. And every time you're doing that, you're always going to move to the next occupied space. So any of these unoccupied spaces, you're going to skip over. So if I was here, I can move one, and then I can move two, and then I can move three for three total movements. After I do that, in that space, I can activate the building's actions that are there, or I can do a single auxiliary action. The auxiliary actions are on our player board. You'll see that in a second. We'll continue to take actions until someone gets all the way up to Buenos Aires. Once we do that, there are six steps that they have to complete. It's going to potentially progress the ships. Some of the ships might be sent over to Europe, and then they're going to place their uh, Estanciero back over here, and that's the next player's turn. And that's going to keep happening. And as you can imagine, with these foresight tokens, it's going to start pushing down that job market tile, and that's going to push us towards the end game. Okay, so... Where are we going to start? I think we're going to start right up here. This neutral building gives us two actions we can take. In this first turn, you essentially will skip your phase A where you can move. Our movement was simply placing our Estanciero. So our first thing that we can do is if we have two of the same cattle type in our hand, we can discard them for two pesos. That's why I wanted to go there because I have these two ones. I'm going to discard both of those and that will give me two pesos. I'll go from seven to nine pesos. Then what I get to do is I can move my train up by one for each Macanista I have on my player board. You start with one worker of each type on your player board. So I have one, I can move my train up one space. We'll move our train from the zero to the one spot. So think of these two areas as showing you your spaces on the actual train track. And unlike the building spaces where we can have multiple Estancieros in the same space, the trains can never do that. So now if Pedro moves his train and he can only move at one space, let's say, he'll actually leapfrog over ours. This is a bit of a race because if you can start moving up on this track, you're going to see there are some shortcut spaces. And if we decide to use that shortcut space, we can get to Buenos Aires artists faster than our opponents. And the farther up you go, there's more and more of those shortcut spaces. Also, if you move up to these train stations, you can get your token here and potentially get this station master, master tile. So it's a bit of a race uh, and we want to beat Pedro if we can. <laughs> That will end our first turn. We will draw up to four cards. We've got a green cow 
and we have a white one, which is nice because now we have a black, green, and white. So if we went to Buenos Aires right now, we could gain six pesos. Uh, unfortunately, that exhaustion card does nothing. However, if you keep that exhaustion card in your hand, when you get to Buenos Aires, you can remove it from your deck. So sometimes you want to keep it in your hand, but there are some buildings that let you trash cards, and so you can also trash it that way. If you just discard it, it's going to stay in your deck and give you that minus two points at the end of the game, and you can potentially draw it again. It's now Pedro's turn. We'll reveal the top card of his deck. First thing he's going to do is he's going to move his Estanciero equal to the amount of the Machinistas he has on his board. If we look at his board here, he only has one. So that means he'll just move one space. If that had been the builders, he would move two spaces. Now he's not even going to do the action on any of the spaces of the board. That's just going to have him moving across the board because that's going to you know push us to the end game. After doing that, depending upon what his speciality is, if it was the Machinistas, he'd actually move up his train equal to the amount of uh, Machinistas he has, but we are not having that as a speciality, so he's just going to move his train up one space. That's what this is saying. This first move for Pedro is simple. He's going to move here, and that's it. In a future turn, he's going to have to determine if he wants to take this route or this route, and I'll show you how he makes that determination. It seems that Pedro wanted to match us in our engine movement, so he will jump right over us to two. Back to our turn, we're going to move to this building. The first thing we can do is discard a black cow, and we have one here for two more pesos. That'll put us up to 11 pesos. Then we can buy a cattle card. We currently only have one guacho, so that means we can only look here, here, and here. The purple cows, which are the best because they can give you five pesos and five victory points, you have to have at least two to get them or four to get them for a cheaper cost. So we're not even gonna be able to grab one of those. Our options are we can get an orange cow for four bucks, we can get one of these three cows for five bucks, or we can get one of these four cows for 11 bucks. I have exactly 11, but I think I'm just going to do five and get one of these ones. This blue cow gives us three strength and three points, as well as it's a different type of cow, and it could give us three pesos when we get to Buenos Aires. So I'm going to grab this one. This will now go into our discard pile. We won't get this into our hand until we have to shuffle our deck and draw again. That was the end of our turn. We discarded one cow, so we get to grab a new cow, cow, and it's another black one. Great, that's what we just discarded. So we actually have six pesos in our hands right now worth of cows. We're back to Pedro's turn. We'll flip the next card up. He's going to move two spaces, and then he's going to draw, try and buy a cow. He has one guacho, so he can only look just like us, only look at what he can potentially buy based on one, which is him trying to buy a three cow. So we snuck him out on that because he would have grabbed that three victory point cow, but now he won't be able to do that. Because Pedro has a split in the road, we have to walk through the steps to determine which way he's going to go. The first way to determine is the shortest path, and that's actually going to be how he's going to determine which way to go. Because if you move through these Gran Herald spaces, that cow as movement. So in order for him to get closer to Buenos Aires, one, two, three, that's how much it's going to cost him to get here versus just one to get to here. Then from there, we could either go one more to here or go one all the way to here taking this path. So since that was the shortest path, that was the two spaces he moved. So now he will be at that tile and now he'll buy a cow. The three cows that are available to him are either two, two, or one victory point. So he's gonna grab this Serrano. We'll place it face down in his player area. He'll score two points at the end of the game for that. I really love how quick it is to activate Pedro as well as activate our own turns in this game. And that's why I think I like this so much competitive. The game is fast. <laughs> it goes pretty quick. I mean, there's times where people have to think, but overall the actions are quick. So what we're going to do, we could either move through this path, but then we have to walk through these Gran Heros lands. And if we do that, remember the green hand, we'd have to pay a two pesos and we'd actually drop them on the board right here that's what this space is for or one for a black hand in order to get to here uh, so i'm not going to do that i'm going to go this way this way we don't have anything to worry about that was movement one movement two we're going to move here and do i want to stop there do one more you know what i kind of like this one i'm going to stay here the first action we can take is moving up our train by one because we have one machinista and then we can do one auxiliary action and if we have both sides unlocked we can actually do it twice. 
We have one train movement and we'll jump right over Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. We have a total of six auxiliary actions on the side of our board. You can see that eventually we can unlock both sides, but right now we have not removed any of these discs. So the only two actions we can do is either gain a peso or draw a card and discard a card. I'm all about money at the beginning because I feel like I need money. And my hand, other than that exhaustion, is, is okay. So I'm just going to do this auxiliary action. If I'd had this open, I would have gained two pesos instead of one. I didn't discard or play any cards in my hand. So because of that, I don't get to draw any more cards. And we'll just move right to Pedro. So Pedro now will move his um, Estanciero equal to the amount of builders he has. And he has two builders. So you can see here there's two on his board. And because that's his speciality, he's also going to build. He'll simply move one two and now let's see what he's going to build don't forget that these buildings do absolutely nothing for him all they do is basically block our way we have to step through them and if there's any hand markers on it we have to pay to the bank any pesos the first thing that pedro will do is try and build a building using all of his carpinteros so he has two he can build either this one or this one then He's going to look at what his sub criteria is and it's having the most hands or having a hand. So he's definitely going to build this one because it has a hand. If we ever end our movement on this space, we can't do the action that's here. And that's even in the competitive game. We can only do an auxiliary action if we move through these. Now, where do we determine where to put this? He's always going to put it as, in, right in front of us as close as possible. One catch to that, though, is he will not place it in any of the spaces that give you a bonus benefit. And the only two spaces in front of us before we get to Buenos Aires has that. So then we're going to wrap around the board and place it at the beginning of the track. That will be right here. So now when we go through here, we're going to have to pay one dollar to the bank in order to walk through this. We could alternatively go up here, but we have to pay two bucks to each of these granjeros when we do that. So we'd lose four pesos, which kind of stinks. So we're probably just going to have to walk through his building. Going back to our turn, we're simply going to move to this building. For each granjero that we have as a worker, we're going to gain one grain. So we have one right now, so we'll gain one grain. And then we can either remove an exhaustion card from our hand or do an auxiliary action. Well, you know what we're doing. That's why I kept this in my hand. Let's get rid of this. And then that way we don't have to deal with having one less card in our hand. You can see here we have one Gran Hero. So that's how we gain one grain. Because we removed that exhaustion card, we can draw our next card or one card to make it a total of four. That is beautiful. That's a Nayata. That's That means our four different cows are in our hand. Two, four, six, seven. So we'll be able to make seven pesos when we get to Buenos Aires for our next turn. Pedro will respond simply by flipping the next card. Let's see, he's going to move one space. This means he's going to take the chosen farmer tile and place it next to Pedro's board. At the end of the game, he's going to score two points for each of these farmer tiles. And we'll talk about how he determines which one he's going to grab. And then over here, depending upon what the X symbol is, which is one, he's going to gain one grain. So I'm going to tick that up right now. He now has one grain. Pedro will move one, so he'll move all the way over to here. As you can see, he did not go in this path because it would have taken three steps to move here instead of only one. So that's the shortest path to Buenos Aires, so he'll move one there. Then we determine which farmer or granjero he's going to satisfy, quote unquote. <laughs> so we have one here with the highest reward of one gold. This one also has one gold, so those two are tied. This one's at zero. So how do we determine between those two? The next step is to look at the farmer tile with the lowest required strength value, and that's in this uh, right-hand corner. This one needs a seven. This one needs a five. So we're going to grab the five, and we'll just place that beside his board. He'll gain two points for that. It's also not allowing us to do that to gain a point as well. It's now back to our turn and we are going to move to Buenos Aires. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut because we can do it. <laughs> we don't have to because there's no other tiles here. It would just take us one to move to Buenos Aires. But we can also, because we have our train at this space or farther, we can sneak over here. So let's say there was a Granjero here that would make us pay pesos. 
we can actually sneak through this road so we don't have to, taking the shortcut to Buenos Aires. So now let's walk through the six steps of going to Buenos Aires. We can do what's called an extra delivery. We can move one of our player discs from a Kea to an empty space on the same city map and then immediately deliver the requested grain to gain the covered bonus. Currently, we only have one disc in a city in La Harve. So the only place we can go to because we only have one grain is this area. If we decide that we want to place our disc in one of these areas, we could gain three or four pesos. And I'm all for that. I need pesos like nobody's business. So I'm going to gain a five and give one back. I also have to pay the one grain to move our uh, tile here from the K, which is this top section, over to that area. Now, you can have as many of your tokens and other tokens of other players here, but once you move them into a city space, that space is blocked and no one else can go there. If I went to these locations, I'd get the bonus and points at the end of the game. We'll tick our grain from one down to zero. We'll then reveal our hand, count up the amount of different cows that we have, and we can use any certificates that we have, we don't have any, and that's going to give us the total amount of pesos that we're going to gain. Then we discard our hand. We can see here, I will gain a total of seven pesos. After doing that, we can choose a disc from our player board and put it on one of the ships equal to or less than the total amount of pesos that we just earned, which was seven. There just so happens to be a ship that has a seven here, so I'm thinking of doing this one. We can see that it's a white box, so whichever uh, player tile that I pull off of my player board, it has to come from a white box, not a black box. However, I need to give grain to those cows so they can survive the journey and I don't have any grain so for this section you can't do this for the other section with the city maps but for this section I can use money or pesos instead of grain and it's two pesos for one grain so I'm gonna lose four bucks to be able to do this but I think it's worth it because you can see here this is yellow and so this will go onto the yellow 1k space when this ship departs it also will give us a one-time benefit of grabbing one of the objective cards, and we can put that into our deck. We'll discard the four pesos. There's three and one more so that we can do this. And now we can choose one of these uh, discs from a white space. And I love doing this one at the beginning because pesos, you always need more money at the beginning. <laughs> at least I find. This is our certificates, and that's what I'm saying. If you can pump these up, they're temporary certificates, and then you can use those when you are bringing your cows to Buenos Aires to uh, get it a little bit higher and get more pesos at that time. You can see these spots up here, they're black, and so that is we can only remove those when we go to a ship that has a black square instead of a white square. Each ship here can have one of every player's discs on it, with the exceptions of the 0 and the 18. Both of those, you can place multiple discs on them that are of the same player. So you want to be careful. If you place a disc on one of these ships, you now can no longer go to that ship for the rest of the game. So just watch that. We have four personal objective cards. As much as I like this one because it's going to be worth five points, I do think I'm going to grab this one because I already have a three cow in my deck. And this just means I need to place two of my tokens in the train stations. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put this into my discard pile. If this goes into my hand, uh, anytime during my turn, I can play it. I'll gain the benefit on the left hand side here, which is one grain. And then I just need to make sure at the end of the game, I actually do this. If I don't, I get minus two points at the end of the game. We'll then replenish that spot with one of these. Let's say we had um, chosen this one. These would have slid down and another one would be revealed. Uh, when you're playing competitively, that doesn't matter. But playing against Pedro, because he's always going to grab this one, it does matter how those uh, flow. We've completed step three of going to Buenos Aires. Let's do four, five, and six. We'll do them together. We have to choose one of the two tiles that are here and either place them on the board if they're a Gran Hero or put them in the job market if they're one of our workers. So I'm going to actually place this one, this one, and this one. And unlike the competitive one, you're supposed to slide these down and then we'll replace them. Now, something that's new for this game. There are two new things here. We'll talk about the Gran Heroes soon, but just know that's the strength cost in order to help them. Uh, but we'll, we'll show that hopefully soon. This symbol is a strength symbol, and that's actually how you help those Gran Heroes. 
whenever a worker has that on their actual uh, worker spot right here, what that means is they're going to cost one more to recruit, but then they can help you when you help those Grand Heroes because you're going to look at all of the cards in your hand and on your player board for those symbols and you're going to count them up. And if you can get equal to or greater than a Grand Hero's strength cost, you've helped them with whatever work that they need and you can remove them from the board and either make them a worker or have them for two points and being used for an objective. So now we'll replace these three, one from the A, B, and C, and then we'll place the three that I just grabbed and put them on the board. We have replenished the foresight box. Let's place out those workers and granjeros. Workers will always be placed from left to right. The moment that you place a worker where this job marker token is, it's going to get pushed down. And since we're only playing a two player game, we're only going to use these two rows. This tells you the cost to, in order to recruit them. You haven't seen the, uh, the building tile where we can recruit them. You'll see that in a second. Uh, and what's important is if there's any workers in the row with this token, those are not available yet. Once the token gets pushed down, any in that row and above, of course, are available. So right now we can buy either of these two for, well, seven, because they both have strength tie, uh, symbols. These two for seven and these two for six and then plus one, so seven as well. We have our first yellow Gran Hero, which is kind of what I was hoping for. I wanted to put one there to slow down the AI. We also have an orange Gran Hero, which we'll place here. We've now completed the six steps of Buenos Aires. We will go to the beginning of the trail and we'll draw four new cards. We actually have a pretty good hand here to start the next round. We're now back to uh, Pedro's turn. He will reveal his next card. Oh, he's going to move his worker two spaces and he's going to build another building. He will move one two. He's now only two steps away from Buenos Aires. He has two builders, so he's going to build this building, trying to put it as directly in front of us as possible. That means he's going to place it right here. So when it's our turn, if we didn't want to do this neutral tile, and we went one, two, three, we'd be stuck here just doing an auxiliary action. We also are going to have to pay him one peso when we walk through here. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> We are somewhat lucky because we do want to do this tile though, so we're going to move here. We can discard a white cow to gain two more pesos. I'll have to look to see how many pesos I have. I actually think I have quite a bit. Then we can recruit up to two workers. Our first worker will be at a regular cost, and then our second worker will actually cost us two more. We don't have to do both. We could choose just to do one. I should have said this before, but I didn't. Do not watch this for strategy. I am not great at this game. <laughs> this is only my second time I'm playing. This is more just to show you how you can play it because I'm sure someone's going to tell me this is a silly idea. But I love the Machinistas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay a 7 for this Machinista. And then I'm going to pay a 7 plus 2, which is 9. And that's all of my pesos. I have 0 pesos. But by doing that, I have grabbed two Macanistas, and I had to pay nine, six plus the two, because my second worker that I buy is two more expensive, and then it had a, a strength symbol, so it's plus one more for cost. That's why it was nine. Doing this, though, gives us a couple fun actions. This first one, when we cover that spot up, means we can discard a card from, or I should say remove a card from our hand. So I have this one cow, I'm gonna remove it from the game. So this is no longer going to be used, it's not in my deck, which is great because I don't need it. There's four of them in my deck. My second one here, I'm gonna place it here, I can discard any one cow, and then I can push up my certificate by one. So I'm going to discard this black cow, and then I'm going to push this certificate up to a one. Nice, okay. Now I have three of these, so whenever I do that action to push up my train equal to the amount of Machinista that I have, it'll be three instead of one. And if I get another one, this gives me an immediate moving two on the train track, which I kind of like. We have exactly three cards left in our deck, so we'll flip them over. Wow, I cannot believe. Oh, and I have two green. Okay, two green, uh, another one, and a white. Moving back to Pedro, we will flip over his next action card. We have, he will move his Estanciero one space, we can, we can see the X equals one, and then he is going to recruit one of the workers. This symbol tells us he will recruit a worker that is the same type as his specialization, so he's going to go for another Carpintero. This is where I'm so happy I put this Gran Hero here, because he will have to move here, he does not get to Buenos Aires yet. He will next time. If his train had been here or farther, he could have used the shortcut to get to Buenos Aires, but he won't do that now because his train is one behind. Yes. 
He'll then recruit one of these Carpinteros. Now, the first thing we look for is the cheapest one he's going to get. Well, unfortunately, this one is seven and this one is seven, so they're both the same. The next thing we'll look at is if the worker has a strength symbol. This one does, so he's going to grab and recruit this one. And remember, he doesn't pay anything for this, he just gets them. This means he now has three Carpinteros. We'll move back to our turn. We're going to move three spaces to this neutral building because I wanna activate that. Now, we just walked over a building that's not ours, it is Pedro's and it has the black hand. We need to pay to the bank one peso, but we don't have any. When you play this game, even competitively, and you cannot pay the cost of a hand, you actually don't do anything. <laughs> you just don't pay it. You pay as much as you can and then that's it. So that was why I was actually okay spending all that money is because I knew that when I walked through this building then I'm not losing any pesos. What we can do on this building is discard a green cow, which we have one right here. So I will discard this for two pesos. So now we have two. And then we can potentially build our own personal building. If we decide to build one of these buildings, we need to pay two pesos for every Carpintero we use to build them. You can see here these two on the left, we only need one. But if we try to build this one, we need nine. Now we can't even place nine. So what we'd actually do is a replacement of one we already had out. For an example, if I already had this one out that had that was used five Carpinteros, I would then only need to use four more to be able to make this nine building. Right now though, I have nothing on the board. So the two I have to choose from, because I only have one Carpintero, are these two buildings. If I do decide to build one of these two, it will mean that I will not have any pesos again. <laughs> But I think it's still worth it. I'm going to grab this one. This one's going to allow us to do an auxiliary action, and then we can move our Estanciero one space forward. So basically, it gives us a free uh, being able to activate one of our auxiliary actions. So I'm going to grab that and place it on the board. I think I'll place this building right here. That way, when I go here, I'll get that free auxiliary action and then move directly to this building and activate this one as well. That's why this ability is awesome. It lets you essentially activate multiple buildings. Now, I only have three cards in hand. I'll draw up to four. I have uh, used all the cards in my deck, so I'll shuffle and redraw. And don't forget, we spent those two pesos we just earned to be able to put out that building because we used one Carpintero and we had to pay him. So we have no money yet again. And we have another gray cow. We're back to Pedro's turn. He is guaranteed to get to Buenos Aires here. So he would move three, but he'll only move one to Buenos Aires. He is then going to discard, so he won't gain the benefit, but he's going to discard one Gran Hero. He will gain one grain, so I'm just going to take him up right now. He has two total grain. Unlike us, he still will get to perform his action when going to Buenos Aires, and then he'll do all the Buenos Aires actions as well, which we'll walk through in a second. But he is first going to Buenos Aires. Let's discard one of the Granjeros. This Granjero has the highest benefit of two pesos, so we'll simply discard this. No one will gain the benefit of it. It's just simply getting removed. Pedro then would look to see if he can deliver any grain for extra points. He could use one of his two grain to go here, but he doesn't use pesos, so he's not going to do that. We other ha otherwise have three, five, and six, so he will not do anything with grain this time. Next time, he likely will. We'll then look at this card to see where he is going to place one of his discs. He's going to place one on the ship that has the one, and it looks like this anchor symbol. I do not love how similar the anchor symbols look for the three different city tiles, but I believe it's this one. So he's going to place his disc there. If there was any benefit here, such as gaining a personal objective, he would also gain that now, but there isn't one here, so we don't have to worry about it. He also would never pay the grain cost. So if there was a grain cost, he'd have to pay it. For that one, no grain cost. Next, he will simply take these three bottom ones and place them out on the board, sliding these three down, and I'll replace them. Now that we've replenished the foresight box, let's place out the workers and granjeros. We had two workers, both of them were guachos. They're going to show up and that's going to push the job market token one more down. You can see this blue arrow and this symbol. Once this gets pushed one more down, all of the yellow ships are going to set sail to the cities. That also means that Pedro will flip to his new card to determine where he's going to place his discs when he gets to Buenos Aires. We've placed the Gran Hero right here. After that, that is the six steps. We will have Pedro go back to the beginning of the trail and it's back to our turn. For our activation, we will move one, two, and we're gonna activate our own personal building tile. 
we can activate one auxiliary action, and if we have both sides unlocked, we can do it twice. Well, we just happen to have that for pesos, remember? So I'm going to get my first two pesos. <laughs> Yay, money! And then we can immediately move our Estanciero one space forward. This will allow us to move to this neutral building where we can immediately activate it. We are going to discard two of the same cows. We have these two gray cows here. We'll discard those. We will then gain two more pesos. That has us go up to a four. And then we can move our train three spaces because we have three Macanistas. Although we can move our train three spaces forward, what I'm thinking of doing is going one, two, and then sliding into here. Because what I would like to do is spend one of those four pesos, so I'm going to go down to three, to be able to place one of my discs here. That will give me two points, and that's a train station that we now control. We're also going to give up one Macanista to gain this station master tile. That's going to give us one uh, permanent certificate each time we get to Buenos Aires. That will help us with gaining more pesos. And now we have a new way to score points. For every two sets of those train station tiles that we have, uh, have our tokens on, we'll gain an additional three points. I like that. We're paying the one peso here. We have three remaining. We're going to unlock this one, I believe. We can spend one peso for one grain. I definitely need more grain, and uh, I don't seem to deal with the Gran Heroes that often, so this is one way that we can do that. Even though we've placed our player disc here, other players can also still place their player disc there when they go through. The only difference is now that we have taken the Station Master tile, no one else can. Of course, that does mean I gave up one of my Macanistas, so if ever I do an action that's equal to the Macanistas I have, I only have two now instead of three. We only have two cards in hand, so we get to draw two cards. We've got another level one cow, and we have our personal objective. I'll show you how that works next time. What's awesome about the personal objective, we already have two parts of that complete now. We already have one of the train stations. We have our disc on, and we have a level three cow that we purchased. So we only need to get one more of those. And then at the end of the game, we'd score four points for this. We're now back to Pedro. Let's flip his next card over. He's going to move two, and then for every Macanista he has, he's going to move his train one space. Pedro will for sure move one here. Now his second movement can either be here or here. Each of them are the same distance to this tile. One, two, three, or one, two, three. So that one doesn't work. Then we look at the path with the lowest fee. Well, he's not paying a fee either way that he's going. So then it says path with the lowest fee to you. Well, the path that's the lowest fee to us is definitely this way. So he's going to move here. He'll now move his train to the three spot. And now he will be able to get to Buenos Aires and skip this Gran Hero as well. I don't love our options for this turn. I think all I'm going to do is go one, go sliding all the way down here to two. I could potentially help up to three Gran Heros there, but my strength with all of the cows in my hand is only five, and I'd have to use three of them for that, so I'd gain two exhaustion cards. That just doesn't seem worth it. Yeah, I'd also get to push my certificate up by one, but I still don't think it's worth it. We're instead going to go three all the way up to here. We'll be able to move our train two spaces because we still have two Macanistas, and then I can activate an auxiliary action, potentially doing both sides if they're both unlocked. We'll slide ourselves back up to the fifth spot and then go to the sixth spot. Now we can sneak to Buenos Aires through this shortcut. The auxiliary action we'll choose is this one where we gain two more pesos. So we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm also going to play this uh, a personal objective. Now, I wouldn't have to play this. I could simply discard it when I get to Buenos Aires. And as long as I never play this, I don't have to play it out for the potential negative two points if I don't think I'm going to get the personal objective. But I think I'm going to. So I'm going to play this. And that means I get a one-time benefit right now, and it gets out of my deck, which is also nice because it'll be out on the table. I'm going to get one grain. So I'll take this up to a one, and I'll place this out on the table. That does mean at the end of my turn, then I get to draw a card and I've got a black cow. At this point, we're quite ahead of Pedro for getting to Buenos Aires. That's not always a good thing or a bad thing. It's just something that you kind of want to watch. <laughs> uh, so we have here, okay, depending upon the amount of guachos, he's going to move. And you can see here, just going to move one. 
Then we can see here he does not have Guachos as his speciality, so because of that he's instead going to do this action. This means he'll take one cattle card from the market with a breeding value of three and the highest amount of victory points. That will be this Serrano card, so he's going to grab that, and yet again he grabs another cow. So he's got two different cows, I only have one so far. This means he'll just move to this building tile. And you know what? He's not pushing me. So because of that, I am going to move to this building tile. That will mean I'll gain one grain. So I'm going to go from one to two. I don't have any exhaustion cards, so I can do one of my auxiliary actions one time. Even if both sides were unlocked, that symbol means I can only do it one time, one side of it. I'll gain the one grain because of the one Gran Hero I have. Then I'm going to activate this ability. I'm going to spend one of my pesos so I can gain another grain. So now I'm at three grain. Oh, I have so much grain, it feels amazing. I did not draw or discard any cards, so we're going to go right back to Pedro. We'll draw his next card, and he has, okay, moving X, X equals one right now. And we can see this. This tells us he's going to recruit another worker. He is moving quite slow. I'm thinking maybe I could run past him again and go get to Buenos Aires another time. I mean, it's helpful for us because we get income. And I might be able to get a disc onto another uh, city tile space or city tile ship. So that could be helpful too. When you see that symbol on Pedro's card, he's always going to look first for the cheapest worker. Well, this one is six plus one because of the strength. So that's seven and that one is seven. So it's between those two. Then he's going to look for a worker of his current specialization. <laughs> so he's going to grab this Carpintero. So we're never going to get any Carpinteros. He's going to steal this one and he's going to place it on his board. That means he now has four of them. Boy, that specialization is probably not going to change. It's back to us. We are going to move ourselves to Buenos Aires through our shortcut. Walking through our steps, we don't have any player discs that are in a K, so we can skip number one. We'll move to number two. Let's look at our hand. We once again have seven total cattle with different colors. However, we also have that permanent certificate. So that means we're at eight for pesos. Currently I'm at eight pesos and that's because of this certificate. I'm gonna sneak it up to nine using our temporary certificate. So we've used that up, but I really want, well, first of all, nine pesos is great, but I wanna place a disc and it's going to be a black disc, which is why I wanna do this in one of the ships that's at the nine spot. In order to get a better hand, we're going to unlock this one, so now we can hold five cards in hand instead of four. However, by doing the nine spot, we have to spend a total of four grain. We had three on our board, so I'm going to spend all three. We're down to zero, and I'm going to have to give up two pesos to make up for the fourth grain. So I'm moving both of these pesos. I now only have seven bucks. I'll now place out the foresight markers. I'm going to choose one here, one here and one here beautiful and then i'm going to slide these down and replenish them we've now replenished the foresight spot let's place our workers and gran heroes we'll place the one worker here now we have not pushed this job market um, uh, token past the blue arrow so we'll leave it where it is but the moment we do that's when all those yellow ships are going to take off we've placed the yellow gran hero way up there the green gran hero right here and we are starting at the beginning of the trail. <laughs> now we're back to Pedro. Oh, I need to draw my five cards. Now I get five cards. I feel so powerful. Not a terrible hand. I did get my level three cow, which I'm super excited about. I'm hoping to get another cow this turn. Let's see how much Pedro is going to move. And that's going to determine if I'm going to race him to the end to try and get one more delivery. Ooh, a two. He's going to gain another grain. So he's at three grain and he's going to move his train up one. Two is definitely going to push us. One, and then he's going to take this path because it's faster. And he'll sneak his train to the four spot. Pedro and his buildings have become somewhat annoying. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to start my turn is I'm actually going to use my exchange token. I know at least one of these three, if not two of those three, are white cows. I need a white cow to make this work. So we have a white cow. Awesome. And our next one is another white cow. Great. So with that exchange, we draw two and then we discard two cards. Well, I'm for sure going to discard this one cow because who needs that? And then I'll discard one of the two white cows. I only have a total of three movement. One, two, three. That would mean we'd only get to here and I would only get to do an auxiliary action. I don't want to do that. So I am going to move here for my first action. And then I'm going to discard that other white cow I have for two pesos. Then we can recruit a worker. 
I wish I had enough pesos to buy two, but I don't. So I'm just going to buy one. Five plus two is seven. This one, because it has a strength symbol, is seven. We're going to place that on our player board. When we place our guacho here, we also gain a exchange token again. So we just got that token back that we just used. <laughs> I then only have four cards in hand. I get to draw one more and I have another black. It's back to uh, Pedro. Let's see where he goes. He's going to move one. He's going to claim the personal objective, which the one that is available is going to score him five points. Jeez. He'll move to this neutral tile. He'll grab this personal objective that's here. I'm going to slide the other ones down, reveal a new one, and I'll place that that's available for us to take. Moving back to our turn, we'll move one, two, three. Moving here, I have two green cows in hand. Might as well discard one for two more pesos. We are going to have to give up one to the bank because there's this black hand we walked through and we did have pesos. So I'm just going to gain one peso instead of two. We then can build or replace a building with our Carpinteros. We have one Carpintero, so we can either build this one that'll cost us two, or we can upgrade our one to one of these two uh, that will also cost us two pesos. So I'm gonna spend the two pesos right here. I think I'm going to grab one more level one tile. This tile will give us one grain for every one of our personal tiles that's on a grain or farmer space. So I'm gonna put this here. If I go there, we'll get one grain because I only have one of these on here. If I get any more buildings out in grain spaces, then this will give us more. Also, if Pedro walks through it and there's a black hand, he'll have to pay us a buck. That will complete our turn. We'll flip over our next card. We have another gray cow. Pedro only has a few of these cards left for his actions. Once he's out, he'll just shuffle the ones that are in the discard pile, which should be all of them, and then continue drawing. So he's going to move his Estancia one space because he only has one guacho. And then here means he actually won't do any actions. That's all he's going to do. The shortest path for these two ways that he can go is actually the way that gives us one peso. So remember how we paid him a peso? Yeah, we just got it back. Thank you. We'll move our Estanciero one, two, going here, activating our ability to gain two pesos. That's our uh, auxiliary action that we're going to do. And since both are unlocked, we'll gain two for that. Then we get to move forward one more space and activate this building. We can discard two cows of the same type in our hand. We have two blacks for two more pesos. So that means we just gained four pesos in this turn and we can move our train two spaces forward. We'll move our two spaces for our train one and then we can choose whether to go to eight and then we skip that train station, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna move into the train station. Let's say I had four movement. If I move into that train station, I forego any other movement that I can use. So I can't use any more movement once I move into that train station, I have to stop. Then the next time I gain movement, I can move up to eight. I'm definitely gonna spend the one coin or the one peso so I can get the three victory points and put one of my discs here. I'm also going to give up, oh, this kind of hurts, but I'm gonna give up another Montecanista or Macanista <laughs> to gain this one. This ability gives us a permanent grain for loading. It can be found on two station master tiles, which provides a reduction of the amount of grain required for loading. This does not apply to the extra delivery grain to European cities. As with all reductions, you will not gain grain if you don't have to do any. But what's nice about that is if I'm putting grain onto a ship uh, to help my cows survive the travels all the way to Europe, I can spend one less. I also want to call out this station tile I explained incorrectly. I was thinking it was this station tile. They do look very similar. This one is about ships that are not the ones that go to Europe, but the ones that we're going to replace those ones with. Those ones, for every two ships that we have our player discs on at the end of the game, will score three additional points. See, I did not have to do anything with the train station tiles, which is a bummer, because that's what I was trying to do, but oh well, it is what it is. I can remove a white disc. I'm going to remove this one. So now if I want to do this, I can spend two pesos to gain two grain. Whenever I do an auxiliary action, that lets me do both sides. We'll place our player disc right here. We only have three cards in hand. Let's draw two more. We have another black cow and we have a white cow. It's back to uh, Pedro's turn. He only has two cards remaining. He will move his Estanciero one space. And that is not the Macanistas, is not his speciality. So he'll do nothing again. We'll simply move him to this tile. I do happen to have a black cow in my hand, so why not move here? We will discard that black cow so that we can gain two more pesos and let's buy a cow. 
I have two guachos, so I could potentially buy this card. However, I have 10 pesos. We need 11 here. Oh, we could use one of our guachos to draw two cards from here and reveal them into the marketplace, but I don't think that's worth it because the next time the job market, well, actually, it has to move two more times. But in two more times than it moves, we're going to replenish up to nine cows here. So I don't think it's worth it. Instead, I'll drop two pesos and buy this last level three cow. It's only one victory point, but it's a different type of cow that goes into my deck and it can help me pump up pesos to Buenos Aires. We'll then draw one card up to five. Oh, we got another level one card. Those terrible cards. This will be Pedro's last card before we shuffle. He's just going to move two and build a building. He has four Carpinteros, so he'll build this one with a green hand, which would mean we'll have to discard two pesos when we walk through there. He'll move two, one, two, and then he'll place this right in front of us. Oh, that's mean. For our turn then, we'll simply move one, two. We'll gain one grain, and we're gonna have to give up two pesos to the bank. We've shuffled up his action deck. He's going to flip it, moving three, removing a Gran Hero, and he'll now have four grain to use. He will move onto this Gran Hero and then escape through here because his train is past that spot. And now let's see which things he's going to do for Buenos Aires. However, before that, we will remove one Gran Hero. The highest valued Gran Hero is right here at two. We'll remove it from the game. Pedro has four grains, so he'll spend three going down to one to place his disc here. At the end of the game, he'll score two points for that. He's then going to place a disc on this ship. That will be a ship number five. He'll then place out these three, sliding these three down, and we'll replace those three. We've updated the foresight box. Let's place our workers and granjeros. He'll place the one guacho right here. That means we've just slid past the blue arrow and all yellow ships will depart. The green Gran Hero was placed here, and the yellow one was placed here. The three ships with the yellow flags are now going to depart, and any of the player discs will be placed out onto those city tiles. We'll then replenish those with two of these from this stack. So we have an eight, and our other one is a four. Actually, they slide right in, and it's only two. So now we have one less ship that we can place our discs on. This ship will drop off Pedro's player disc right here. This ship will drop off this player disc on this space. And finally, the ship that we have our player token will be placed onto here. And you have to see the different symbols on these flags tells you which of the different city tiles. And they are not very different. I really think they could have done a better job having these differentiated. I also didn't talk about this <laughs> uh, when I did our setup. Two player, you place one of these out, it blocks a bunch of spaces in here. If you're playing four player, you can see you have a lot more spaces that you can place out player discs because there's more players. So that's what this uh, thing is doing. Finally, because those three ships have departed, we'll flip to the level two card. X is still equal to one, but this tells us now where the uh, Pedro will be placing his player discs whenever he goes to Buenos Aires. We'll then place Mr. Pedro back down at the beginning of the trail, and now it's back to our turn. For our turn, we will move one, two, and go to this building and activate it. We only have one Macanista, so we'll move our train up one space, and then we're going to spend two pesos to increase our grain by two to three from one, doing our uh, auxiliary action on our player board. We're back to uh, Pedro. Pedro will move one, and he will buy a cow. Oh, that's three or less. We don't have any of those. It states here, if there is no such card, he will not take any cattle card. Cool. He'll simply move one, and it's back to us. I'm going to move to this building, gaining one grain from our, our one Gran Hero. That puts us to four. And then our one auxiliary action, because either we can get rid of an exhaustion a card, which we don't have any, or do an auxiliary action. And our auxiliary action will be to spend one of our pesos to increase our grain to five. We have five grain now. We'll then see how Pedro reacts. He's going to move one, and he's going to grab one of the cheapest workers. Moving one, we'll place him here. The cheapest worker will be this guacho at only cost of five. He finally has a worker that's not a carpintero. <laughs> We'll then go ahead and use our shortcut to go to Buenos Aires. We're going to deliver four out of the five grain to be able to move this player disc here, gaining eight pesos, 
and four points instead of only two points at the end of the game. I kind of like that. We'll then look at our hand and we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight for different cow types, plus the one permanent certificate, that is nine. We're going to grab this player disc and put it here on this ship. We normally would need one grain, but we have this where we get to reduce the grain cost by one, so we don't have to pay any grain for that. We also can grab one of the personal objective cards. Oh, which one do I want to do? I think I am going to do this one. I'm going to grab this one and put that into my discard pile. We'll then replenish that with this uh, objective card. We'll then do our foresight and we're going to grab these three and we're going to place them out on the board, sliding these down and replenishing them. After refreshing the foresight space, let's place out our workers and granjeros. The two workers will be placed like so, pushing this down and now we pass this spot. This states will replenish the cattle market up to nine cars. We only have one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to reveal four more, one, two, three, four, and these four are going to go into the marketplace. So we've got oh, three more threes and one four. We'll then place out this Gran Hero. We would then draw our hand up to five cards and go back to Pedro's turn, and we continue to do this until this job market token gets pushed off the board, and that would complete the game. I do think I'm going to call it here. I think I've shown you how this game works. There's only one thing I didn't really do, so let's talk about this action quick. If ever you activate this tile or you land on a Gran Hero and end your movement there, you can try and help that Gran Hero. Here you can help three of any type that are on the board. How you do that is you need to get strength equal to or greater than the Gran Heroes that you're trying to help. When you do this in the building location, you can choose any three Gran Heroes. When you're doing it in a space with a Gran Hero, it has to be the one that's there. This tells you how much strength you have, uh, you have to have in order to help them. You can use cows, because you can see some cows have a strength, like this one has a strength of seven. So yeah, although it um, is only a one, and so it doesn't give you a lot for value when you go uh, to Buenos Aires. It gives you three points at the end of the game and seven total strength, which is super helpful in helping Gran Heroes. However, if I use one to two cards from my hand, I gain an exhaustion card. If I use three or more, I'll actually gain two exhaustion cards. But then that's how you gain these uh, Gran Heroes, which I never did. Just wanted to explain that. There you have it. That was Great Western Trail Argentina. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully this helps you get the game to the table if you have it or if you want to pick it up. I do think this is slightly better or more balanced than the Great Western Trail. However, I think overall, I, I think I like the original slightly better, um, but that's just because I'm used to it. <laughs> Uh, trying to manage grain on top of everything else, albeit it's fun, it does mean that you have a lot more time that you're thinking about what you're going to do because you've got a whole nother thing you have to manage. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more meaty, juicy, and thinky, I would recommend this one. If you just want to enjoy the going across the trail, uh, delivering goods, and getting better cows, I think the original is probably good enough for you. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you at the next stop.